हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू द सेकेंड वीडियो ऑफ द एट्थ चैप्टर ऑफ जोग्राफी फ्रॉम इंटीग्रेटेड सोशल साइंस रत्न सागर क्लास सिक्स इंडिया फिजिकल फीचर्स इन द प्रीवियस मॉडल वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द नदन प्लेन सब कॉन्टिनेंट एंड एंड द इंडियन सब कॉन द रीजन दैट इज नोन एज इंडियन सब कॉन्टिनेंट इन दिस पर्टिकुलर मॉड्यूल वी विल बी डीलिंग विद द नदन प्लेन्स ओके हियर इज द मैप रिगार्डिंग द नदन प्लेन्स so as you can see that the northern plains occupy the greater part of the northern india isn't it as you can see here from the map that it is occupying the greater part of the northern india and it lies uh, towards the south of the northern mountains okay it is lying towards the south of the northern mountains and it is also known as the ganga brahmaputra plain okay it extends from uh, satluj river in the west okay here is the satluj river so it extends from the satluj river in the west to the brahmaputra river in the east for about 2400 kilometers okay the length it is the northern plains uh, are 2400 kilometer long okay and the width of the northern plains decreases okay the width of the northern plain decreases towards the east and the northern plains of india are made up of fine silt okay the northern plains of india are made up of fine silt brought by the rivers coming from the himalayas in the north okay the rivers coming from the himalayas in the north and the central highlands and the rivers coming from the central highlands in the south this fertile silt is called alluvium okay the fertile silt which gets deposited over here is called alluvium and the thickness of alluvium deposited by the rivers varies from place to place and as you can see here that the northern plains okay uh, is uh, somehow uh, covering the uh, vast vast area okay and the northern plains are divided into three parts the first one is the rajasthan plain okay the second one is the ganga basin okay the rajasthan plain is also known as the great indian desert okay the ganga basin and the brahmaputra valley okay this brahmaputra valley is also known as assam plain okay so we will be dealing with the rajasthan plain with uh, the three parts of the northern plains okay coming on to the rajasthan plain which is also known as great indian desert okay it covers the western part of the rajasthan uh, of the state rajasthan and the area has a number of short seasonal streams which are not able to reach the sea therefore this is an area of inland drainage okay the rajasthan plain or the great indian desert is an area of inland drainage and the land here is generally rocky and sandy what is the meaning of the term inland drainage when we are talking about inland drainage what is basically inland drainage as i have already told that the short seasonal streams Uh, uh lying in this particular area is unable to reach the sea and therefore this is an area of inland drainage so inland drainage basically means rivers and streams which are unable to reach the sea or the ocean okay rivers and streams which are unable to reach the sea or ocean okay so this was all about the gang the uh, great indian desert or the rajasthan plain coming on to the ganga basin the ganga basin covers the largest part of the northern plains it covers parts of haryana okay do uh, give a look to the map okay do uh, read the map uh, thoroughly okay so uh, it covers parts of haryana rajasthan madhya pradesh uttar pradesh bihar and west bengal okay and river ganga 
originates from the gangotri glacier from which glacier the ganga originates the ganga originates from the gangotri glacier in the himalayas and enters the plain at haridwar okay the river ganga originates from the gangotri glacier in the himalayas and enter the plains at haridwar let me show you the location of gangotri glacier okay the ganga originates from the gangotri glacier okay the, as uh, you can see here the position of the location of the glacier okay so river ganga originates from the gangotri glacier in the himalayas and enter the plains at hari dwar so here is hari dwar okay the river ganga enters the plains at hari dwar and the ganga along with its tributaries such as yamuna as you can see here yamuna in this map also you will be able to see the rivers okay yamuna gomti ghagra gandak kosi okay uh, uh, let me come again uh, repeat the tributaries of the ganga as well okay uh, that have deposited fertile alluvium in this part are uh, yamuna you can see here here is yamuna then gomti ghagra gandak and koshi let me show you uh, this map on a larger area okay let me show you this map on a new slide i think you guys are able to see it now okay so the ganga along with its tributaries yamuna gomti ghagra gandak and koshi have deposited fertile alluvial soil here okay in this part the northern plains and the rivers coming from the south such as chambal betwa kain son okay these rivers are coming from the south okay let me repeat them once again chambal betwa kain and son okay here is chambal betwa and son let me show you uh yes chambal betwa and kain and son okay these are the rivers coming from the south have also contributed to the formation of this plain and the general slope of this area is towards the east okay the general slope of this area is towards the east coming on to the last part of the northern plains that is the brahmaputra valley okay the brahmaputra valley or the assam plain lies in the eastern india okay you can see here it is lying in the eastern india and the brahmaputra river let me uh, take you to the next map okay the brahmaputra river here you can you are able to see that the brahmaputra river okay so the brahmaputra river originates in tibet where it is called sangpo okay it is called sangpo in tibet so the brahmaputra river originates in tibet okay basically in tibet the brahmaputra river rises from a glacier named chemayung dang glacier okay it is located near mansarovar lake mansarovar let me uh, show you the location of lake mansarovar okay this is the location of mansarovar and uh, here is the place okay where chemayung dang glacier is where the from where the ganga the brahmaputra river rises okay so uh, brahmaputra river rises basically originates in tibet where it is known as sangpo okay what it is known as in tibet it is known as sangpo in tibet and it enters india okay it enters india through arunachal pradesh and this river brings a large amount of silt and from assam it enters bangladesh okay from assam it enters bangladesh where it is called jamuna okay i think you are able to see the name jamuna okay from assam it enters bangladesh where it is called jamuna and the ganga and the brahmaputra river join together and form the largest delta in the world in this particular region okay the ganga and 
the brahmaputra river joined together and formed the largest delta in the world named the sundarbans okay and a major part of this delta lies in bangladesh okay a major part of this delta lies in bangladesh what is the name of the delta which is formed when uh, uh, because of the joining of the two rivers the ganga and brahmaputra it is the brahma it is the sundarbans okay the ganga brahmaputra delta which is also known as sundarbans okay we are coming on to one more thing that the northern plains have many advantages okay so what are the advantages of northern plains what is the importance of the northern plains so the northern plains provide a flat surface which is suitable for building roads and railways the rivers deposits fertile alluvium every year here and hence the soil here is fertile which makes agriculture a prime occupation here okay a lot of people uh, practice agriculture in this particular region rivers provide water for irrigation as well and this region is having a favorable climate okay the favorable climate con climatic condition supports round the year farming here so we have completed the northern plains let us recapitulate what we have read that the northern plains uh, uh, is divided into three parts the rajasthan plain the ganga basin and the brahmaputra valley okay the rajasthan plain also known as the great indian desert uh, lies in the western part of the state of rajasthan it has a number of short seasonal streams which never reach the sea and that is why this region is this is an area of inland drainage and the area is basically uh, rocky and sandy coming on to the ganga basin haryana rajasthan madhya pradesh uttar pradesh bihar and west bengal okay this basin consists of covers these part the parts of these states okay and river ganga originates from the gangotri glacier enters plain at haridwar and the general slope here is towards the east ganga and its tributaries yamuna gandak kosi gomti ghagra and rivers from the south that is chambal betwa kane and son these rivers deposit fertile alluvium in this particular plain okay and the rivers from south also contribute to the formation of this plain okay coming on to the brahmaputra valley which is also known as assam valley is to the eastern part of india lies in the eastern part of india okay the brahmaputra river originates here in tibet and in tibet it is called sangpo okay it enters india through arunachal pradesh and this river brings a large amount of silt from assam it enters bangladesh okay where it is called jamuna the ganga and the brahmaputra join together and form a delta known as ganga brahmaputra delta and is also called as sundarbans why it is called sundarbans because this uh, region is dominated uh, by a uh, tree uh, mangrove trees basically are uh, found in this particular region okay because uh, the mango the mangrove trees are called sundari by the local people okay that is why this delta is named uh, the sundar bans okay and uh, uh, we uh, the northern uh, plains are uh, very uh, are having a lot of importance okay they have many advantages because uh, the northern plains provide a uh, flat surface for building uh, houses and railways and other things also okay and every year the rivers deposits a fertile alluvium here and hence the soil is fertile which is suitable for agriculture and that is why most of people residing in this particular region practice agriculture okay coming on to the next one the thing is that rivers here uh, provide water for irrigation and uh, the climate here is very much favorable okay and that is why uh, it supports the uh, round the year farming okay so this was all about the northern plains in the next video we'll be discussing about the peninsular plateaus till then have a nice day to read the topic first and then watch the video thank you